Uh, tonight we're also on, uh, we've got a live webinar, so uh, it's going to be recorded for, for, for the guys who couldn't make it. Okay, so I'm Mark Whitman from Vunani. I think a lot of you know me. Um, tonight I'm talking about a, a topic that I'm actually quite passionate about. It's, uh, it's called copy trade or coattail investing or mirror trade you know, or social trading. It's quite a couple of names for it. And it's kind of almost an unknown um, type of trading in South Africa. It's, it, it is starting to get traction. Anybody who trades FX offshore would, might have come across social trading. But it's something that we, I'm quite passionate about. And we've got two dedicated traders on our trading desk, Greg and JD, who are looking particularly at this project and about getting social trading or copy trading uh, off the ground. So what I'm going to go through tonight is the rationale for copy trade, a little, little bit what it's about. What is copy trade? How does it work in South Africa or how does it not work at the moment? Because it, it doesn't really exist, but it, it is coming. And then what are the pitfalls? What to watch out for? And, and really as a retail client, I'd urge you to have a look at copy trade or social trading because this really is a good, useful tool for you as a, as a trader. Now, a lot of the slides I'm going to use tonight are not mine. They're, there's such good literature out there about social trading or copy trading uh, from some, some offshore providers that I've, I've, I've liberally helped myself to some of their slides, but, but I've tried to localize them to a degree. Um, just to, at, we'll take questions at the end if you don't mind. And just to remind the guys who are joining us on the webinar, feel free to ask questions. You can just type them in, and we will read those questions out at the end as well. So let's get into a little bit about coattail investing. Okay, so the rationale for copy trade. So this is Cirrus, um, which is very big in uh, a technology provider in uh, Cirrus, in, in offshore in terms of FX. And basically their rationale is the average Joe who's out there, Typically, he does all the social things. He uses Facebook, he uses Twitter, um, he, you know, he, he probably has a LinkedIn account. You know, he does all of those things in the social way. And, and a lot of people are online and being social nowadays. Um, and he does that all day. And he probably does that all night as well. And there's some stats about how often people use social networking, etc. And it's massive. We all know how big it is. I mean, what, what, is, what does Facebook have? A billion users. And that seems to work in terms of the social environment but it hasn't really applied very much in, in terms of the trading environment until the last sort of three or four years. So typically there's some stats here and I'm not going to read them. They basically justify how many people are on, online and how big that community is and how often they're talking to each other. And if you think about trading in South Africa, you hardly ever talk to your colleague, your trader, you know, the market as a whole to gauge what other people are doing, how they, what their strategies are, etc. And so what happened a couple of years ago is there are a couple of providers that, that looked at social, the social networks and that ability for people to interact and share knowledge and said that that would work well for trading. So there's a couple of providers out there who have become very, very large in this space. So there's guys like eToro, um, Currency, and ZuluTrade are the three probably main providers. Um, ZuluTrade, surprisingly, is not a South African company. They're based out of Cyprus. Um, so they looked at social trading and said, this is something that we can apply to the FX, particularly the FX world. So once again, using Surex as uh, slides, if you're like Joe and you enjoy being part of community, why not combine your interests? So what happens nowadays is, and I'll show you an example now, social trading is very much about, and, and if you haven't seen this, this is what a social trading screen looks like. So you've got a normal trading screen, doing your technicals, putting in your trades, etc. But what they do is they tend to bombard you with the this, this social ideas. So-and-so's trading, why don't you follow them? This person's trading, and it's all sort of different strategies. And we'll unpack a few of those strategies a little bit, a little bit later. But this is what the essence of social trading, is that there are people out there. So it turns out that in terms of behavioral psychology, 1% of the people want to get heard, and 99% of the people don't really want to be heard. They want to be followers. And this is what tends to happen. That 1% tends to be the leaders here. They tend to come up. They tend to show their trades. They talk about their strategies. They're happy to blog. They're happy to write. And they're happy to tell you what they're doing. And some of them are good and some of them are rubbish. And, and that's the art of social trading is to pick who's good and who's bad. So how many of you guys have ever gone in front of a trading screen like this and seen social trading? Because if you have, then you might as well leave now because the rest of the presentation is not going to be interested in. Okay, so I've got to assume that you haven't kind of seen this sort of stuff before. 
So in terms of, and these are stats, why, why is social trading kind of important? Well, this is eToro's stats, and they're quite recent. They've just gone past 100 million trades. I mean, that's a massive number of trades. Now, eToro, as a social trading business, has only been going about four or five years. So that's a huge number of trades. What tends to happen is 42% of the community are the trade leaders in their environment and 58% are followers. But there's this interesting stat. The guys that generate the trades, the trade leaders or the, or the lead traders or the EAs, there's a couple of different names for them, they tend to be right 63% of the time. But the community that follows them is actually right 83% of the time. And that's kind of an important stat. That means that the community that's watching these trade leaders tends to figure out who the schmucks are and don't follow them, and then tend to follow the good guys. And there's a couple of ways, I think, of figuring out who the schmucks are, and we'll come to that just now. But if you can be 83% of the time right, I mean, that's an incredible stat, because I don't think our trading desk is anywhere near that in terms of our own trading strategies. So if you can be inside a community and you can start following experts and they can give you 83% of the time uh, the correct, correct type of trades, you, you kind of want to be in that space. And these, these are actual audited stats from eToro. So what is, what is copy trade? So I'm going to use the other big copy trader to kind of explain to you what copy trade is. So here is, here is a whatever business lady. She wants to trade. And uh, this is from Zulu Trade. And what she inundated with. And, it, and if, if any of you have tried to trade, you kind of will know this. It's all about this fundamentals and ratios and quants and technicals and which chart pattern should I follow and what is, what's, where should I put my stop losses. This is a massive barrage of information. And it's getting worse and worse. As you now tend to trade, if you were just trading shares in the past, then you had to worry about two, 300 shares. Now you're worried about indices, trading commodities, FX. Uh, maybe you're trading uh, bonds, you know, there's a huge amount of information overload. So what social trading kind of tends to do is cut through that because someone else is sitting there doing all of that analysis and doing that, typically doing that hard work for you. So here's a real example. I don't know if I'd follow this guy. I don't think he looks old enough to be a trader in my opinion. But anyway, this is a guy on, on Zulu Trade. And this is just one I picked at random. And why he's kind of interesting, he's got a hundred and, no, he's got 3,415 people following him. So clearly he's got quite a good following. He's been trading for 157 weeks, so he's got quite longevity. You know, anybody who's got three, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks in their track record, you probably want to leave them alone. Because what tends to happen, and I'm probably getting to what I, the pitfalls at the end, but let's explain one of them now. The problem with social trading is when you're trying to make a, a career and a track record for yourself, after four or five weeks, if it's not working, you close that, that, uh, that account down, you open another account, you reinvent yourself, you put a different little picture up there, and you call it your other strategy, and you try again. And four weeks from now, you've lost all your money, so you close that account, and you start again. So the guys with sort of four to six weeks to eight weeks sort of track record, you probably want to avoid them for a while. Let them get some time under their belt and, and get a decent uh, ROI. So this is a return on investment, 93%. That figure on its own doesn't really tell you much. That tells you he's made 93% on that account. But he might have traded like a lunatic. He might have taken on massive risk that you're not willing to take on. So you need to drill more into those stats, and I'll get to that just now. But so you're sitting there in front of a social trading environment, and you decide that you like him, maybe because he's pretty and he's a nice-looking guy, and you click and you follow him. What will then happen is that every time he does a trade, you will do that exact trade. So... This is another social networking. This is currency. Uh, this is their marketing. This guy's fantastic. He's so pleased because he's got these three lead traders that he can follow. Yeah, you can see he's ecstatic. This is the sort of way they represent their, their trade leaders. You can see different metrics, different stats, annualized returns. And it's the same. Once you choose one of these trade leaders, you lock in that you're going to follow them. And remember, there's optionality in this. You can opt out any time. So if you're following one, two, three trade leaders, and they're not doing particularly well, then you can vote with your feet and stop trading, uh, following them. There's no lock-ins in these sort of services. You don't have to give 30 days notice. This is not like an asset manager who's going to charge you a penalty for leaving his fund. You can jump in and out of following it, these guys. So he sits down on his computer. He decides to follow these three guys who look like the most untrustworthy people in the world, but he goes for it. So typically what happens, and this is back to Zulu Trade, 
This is the lead trader's account. In our opinion, the one thing about social trading that is a caveat mTOR in our lives, if the lead trader doesn't have real money in a real account, don't follow them. If they're only trading a paper trading theoretical account, they've got nothing to lose. They've got no skin in the game. They don't really care if they blow that account out. So you want to follow a lead trader who's got a real account, who's got real money, and it's real performance. Okay, so if it says a virtual account, probably don't follow those guys. So that's a real account. This is you. So typically what happens, well not typically, this is exactly what happens. As he does a trade, so do you. And try to follow a service that's proportional. So if he's got $100,000 in his account or 100,000 Rand and you've only got 10,000 Rand, your trade should be one-tenth of his. If you happen to get the same size trade as his, well, then you've overexposed. So you need to have a proportional system here. The other thing that you should ensure is that everything that he does, you must mirror. So if he puts a stop loss in, your system must mirror the stop loss as well. If he has a take profit, then you must mirror that to, uh, take profit. A good system should do all of that for you. Um, and so you are exactly following his trading regime. So what happens? As he trades, as he trades, as he trades, you, you should trade. And the money management in, in your account should match his money management. So if he has a rule that says he's never going to spend more than 50% of his trading account, your account should never go above 50% if it's correctly, if you're correctly mirroring his account. So everyone following me so far, really you get this one account with this supposed expert, hopefully they are, and you are now mirroring exactly what, what, what they're doing. The good thing about this, and this is an interesting thing that doesn't happen here because our market opens at 9 and closes at, uh, at, at 5 for our equities market, Open, opens at half past 8 for our derivatives and closes at half past 5. This doesn't apply here, but it applies if you're trading FX. That robot or that EA or that follow me will carry on working while you're asleep. And if you're following the right guy, he will make you money while you're asleep. Because that FX market, trading dollar, euro, or one of these instruments, does trade 24, pretty much 24-7. So he, if you follow the wrong guy, he is going to be losing you money while you're asleep as well. So, uh, um, so once again, caveat dem tour on who you follow on this. So this is not going to apply on local uh, social trading because you're only going to trade probably local instruments and you know, it'll be only be trading while our market's open. But if you are trading offshore indices, offshore FX, offshore commodities, this can certainly be the case. Reporting on these on this social trade, uh, trading is impeccable. It's actually they've done massive amounts of work on reporting. You know, I wish our trading systems has, had as good a reporting as these things. Um, so the sort of stuff, and this is free, this is a crowd called Blue FX. So if you've got an account, you, you can give them view only status and they can give you this sort of reporting on how your trading is going. And I've just taken a screenshot here. This is of, a, of an FX robot. But this is free reporting. So this will tell you maximum drawdowns, durations, how much risk this client takes on, his win-loss ratios, his average uh, percentage returns. All of these, these metrics uh, are available. How, how many trades he's opened and closed, you know, average win per trade. All of these metrics are available uh, from these social trading, you know, and this is the sort of thing that you must judge your trade leader or whoever you're following on. You know, they must have good metrics and that must flow through to you. So, unfortunately, now we get the localized bit because how does it work here? Well, kind of in the last couple of years, it hasn't. Um, there has been no real good social trading. There has been Global Trader did launch uh, a service a couple of years ago where you can follow or see what some of the traders are doing. So, I mean, that does exist. And Sunlam iTrade had a social trade where everybody voted which stocks to buy and then they gave away the profits to charity. So, there are guys who do run manual systems. Uh, we are one of them for our clients where we ought to execute. But we haven't really, nobody's really done it to the degree of the eToros, the Zulu trade, the currencies. Uh, in the past. But I think that is starting to change, that landscape's changing. And one of the providers, and it's a provider that we've partnered with now, is a crowd called Miravest. So you can go onto their website, um, and they are launching next month, and they are bringing some of this technology. And we we like the technology, so we've partnered with them as a stockbroker. So we will be rolling out Miravest to our clients as an option, but on specific 
uh, trade leaders. So, guys, if you want to if you want to engage with Mervis, please do it through us because we want to vet the trade leaders. We don't want you following, you know, you know anybody can become a trade leader on that system, and that's we want to kind of go through some sort of validation and make sure you're following uh, our clients are following decent traders. So this is launching now, 1st of October. Uh, we are in uh, testing at the moment, and we are starting to put on uh, lead traders on there at the moment. So the sort of stuff that you will get, so we're talking about reporting. We showed you that offshore reporting. You can see they're kind of copying what the offshore guys are doing. So you'll know who your lead trader is. You'll kind of understand what his methodology is, um, how he trades, statistics, his P&L, his, his, uh, his amount of risk, how much trades he does. These sort of metrics will all come through in the data. What we will do over and above that is we will keep this data ourselves and we will validate this data because those trading accounts are with us. Uh, we will uh, do third-party validation on that and we will also produce our own stats just to keep this uh, very honest. Um, and it's literally going to work the same way as the offshore platforms work. So you'll decide that you're going to follow, and that's a, a very, very bad copy, but you decide to follow this guy and if you want to at any stage you click and unfollow him. That's literally how that process works. You can opt in, opt out at any time. And you can follow multiple uh, trade leaders at the same time. The one thing we do say about that, in my opinion, is if you're going to follow multiple trade leaders, you probably want to open up more than one account because then it becomes accountable. You can measure that account. You can see how each guy's doing rather than have it all aggregated into one. So where do we think? So given this sort of stuff is going to roll out in the next couple of months, um, where do we think we are positioning our sort of trade leaders? So these are a section of a, a selection of EAs that we're working on. Some of them you'll recognize are trading systems that we already run. Some of them are portfolios that we already run. So the first one is Robbie Pietropolo, and Robbie's here. So Robbie runs a couple of services for us. He is a trader on our desk, but he is also a technical analyst. And he's been running smart trading um, for about a year and a half, two years, eh, Robbie? So we're formalizing that into a, 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 a lead trader and into a social trading. And you can auto-execute on uh, smart trading in terms of either eCFDs, CFDs, or single stock futures. Initially, we're going to start off with CFDs. They're just easier. Um, and you can follow Robbie's trades. You know, there you can read about his, you know, clearly I can send you these slides. You can read about his philosophy and how he trades. But really, it's short-term momentum technical trading. Robbie also runs index trading for us. Um, and we are both trading local indexes and we're trading offshore indexes as well. So those are those are three EAs that we will launch in, well, one of them already exists. Two more will come very shortly uh, that are run by Robbie. So he's here. You can put a face to it, and if you've ever got any problems, engage with him and tell him his EA is rubbish, and he, he must rewrite it and rebuild it and fix it. So, But um, very short-term aggressive trading on that one. When I say aggressive, the trade size is not very big. I mean, I think it's 5% money management on it, 5 to 10% per trade. The other one that, we, that we're launching is, is we've taken our hedge fund. Uh, we, we run a, a multi-strat a uh, hedge fund and we run a long short hedge fund and the problem with hedge funds is the entry criteria for clients for retail clients is exceptionally high so what we've done is we've taken the same strategies that we run in our long short hedge fund uh, hedge fund which is run by McKillis and Angelo who is our hedge fund manager and what we've done is we've taken that down to a retail level so that you can copy his trades so this is a very much a multi strat long short top so he will have longs and shorts in there once again, a, a typically a geared portfolio, um, and we're calling it Enhanced Alpha. It's the whole purposes of this portfolio is to create alpha for clients. So there is a there is a social or a copy trade where you're copying a hedge fund manager who runs up who runs our funds. We're also not scared to bring in experts. So um, this is uh, Nicole. She runs a service called Needle in the Haystack. She's based out of Pretoria. She runs this trading service for. Uh, retail and private clients. We engaged with her and said, can we, can we bolt on automated trading to what you already do? And we kind of like the things she says. You know, these are the sort of things that you should look at when you start looking at a trade leader and saying, am I going to follow this person? They must have their own money uh, in the game. So my own money is fully invested in my strategy. 
That's what we like to see. We want them to have a real account. They must have their own money. So when, they, when they, they're not doing so well, it must hurt them financially as well. They must be able to ex explain their strategy to you. You know, this is an 80-20. She does mostly 80% fundamentals, 20% technicals. The interesting thing about this is you probably want to diversify across strategies. So Robbie is technical. McKilly is very quantitative hedge fund type strategy. Uh, Nicole is fundamental to a, to a degree. So you kind of want to diversify your trading strategy across different types of strategies. Because if you've got one, if you follow 10 trade leaders and they all do technicals and they all follow the same head and shoulders, well, then you might as well follow just one of them. Uh, because all you're doing is replicating the same strategy across everybody. Just to show you, and I've, I've specifically color-coded these out because you're not going to get free info. You need to have an account with us if you want this. Um, you can see she can sometimes be very, very active. So this is, this is actually her trade recommendation she put out today. I'm not giving you the levels, but those are the sort of stocks that are on her buy and sell list uh, for this week. Um, and at the moment, this is how she would have operated. She would have sent out an email to her clients. They would have given us the order. We would have put it into the market, or they would have gone onto the trading system themselves and put it in. Now what we will do with her now in the future is she will put them in herself, and as she puts that order in with a certain uh, price entry, stop loss, and take profit, the system will replicate it exactly the same trade into your account for the exact same money management. And we think that's how trading should be. Um, you shouldn't be worried about Excel spreadsheets that are being sent to you and you, you don't know if you're capturing it in right. So that is the sort of trades that she does. Quite active. You can see if, you, if you're someone who wants to buy one stock a year, this is probably not the service for you. This is a service where you're going to get three, four, five trades a week. Um, it's a very active service. Gold, silver. Okay. So gold, silver are an interesting uh, group of guys. It's a guy called Phil and Nick. Uh, they're based out of uh, London, uh, London and Dubai. And they only do commodities. And they concentrate on uh, only a couple of commodities, gold, silver, copper, platinum, palladium, oil, natural gas. And then they do some softs. They do corn, wheat, and sugar. Um, sorry. So they concentrate on nine different commodities. And they are fairly short-term traders. And they, uh, they look at trading commodities uh, on an intraday and short-term basis. Well, not necessarily intraday, but intraday or every couple of days. And they probably come up with about three or four different trading ideas on commodities every week. What's kind of interesting about these guys, every Thursday we have a webinar with them. Clients can uh, join the webinar for 20 minutes, and they can show you the setups, and they can show you how they think. And here you're, you've got guys who are, are rated as one of the top commodity traders in the world, um, or commodity educators and analysts in the world, and they are uh, willing to share their information with you. Nick, Nick and Phil, uh, as I say, gold, silver. Um, this is the sort of setups they do. Commodities doesn't appeal to everyone. It appeals to me. I love trading gold and, and, and copper and silver, especially silver. Silver moves around all over the place. Um, this is a corn trade. So this was actually sent out this morning, I think, Greg. Um, so this is a trade that they dropped. But if you were following the automated system, you would have traded this. As that trade, as it hits there, does what they, they, they say it's going to do, they're in the trade and so are you. And as I say, we're trading about nine different commodities with them. And we're trading them currently in dollars, but we will be trading them in rands as well. Uh, we're going to look at modifying this for rand-based instruments on our own exchange. So as I say, that's uh, gold, silver. This newsletter is also available for us if, uh, from us. If you want to just send us a mail, we can, we can add you onto, onto that database. Okay, the other one that clearly is very ubiquitous around the world is Forex trading. It's massive. I mean, it is the biggest, most liquid market in the world, so it's where the most people trade. So this is a local guy. This is, um, what's his name? Glenn, Glenn. Glenn from Practical Pips. He's a very nice guy. Built this. Uh, he's just up the road. He, uh, he built this uh, little FX engine of his. And his goal is, as he calls it, his 500 pip challenge. He tries to make 500 pips on FX every month. Is that right, eh, Greg? And, and there's his little barometer. And that's all he tries to do. He doesn't trade very often. Trades maybe once or twice a week, eh, Greg? On FX, he's not a massively active trader, but he's just trying to get a lot of consistency and, and, and trying to make 
accretive profits every month. So that's the sort of stuff we're doing. This doesn't particularly lend itself to Yieldex, to our own currency futures. It just doesn't work that well for currency futures. So we tend to do these sort of ones in the offshore forex environment. And once again, you can do that in RANDs uh, through one of the RAND providers, or you can do it in go offshore into US dollars uh, and, and trade to guys like INFX, Saxo, these sort of providers. So another another FX one, this is a, 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 a an FX trading robot that we've been uh, working with a guy called Miles. Uh, he's a computer programmer and he's built an FX robot. And this thing automatically trades. And you know, the thing about black box is the problem when it goes wrong, you don't know why it's broken. You know, so robots are great. They will sit there and trade for you, but you've got to have a level of confidence that the guy who built it knows what he's doing and that robot's not going to just go off the rails. So um, the one good thing about this is that's a payoff profile that I think anybody would want. It just makes nice little accretive profits. It does small little trades. And the one thing that you always want from a system like this, you clearly you want it to be profitable. You want a level of transparency that you want to know what's happening on that trading robot, how it's coming up with its trades. And this, as I said, this is this um, FX Blue. This is a free system that you can download or actually just log on on the web and you can monitor your account. And you can see it's got massive amounts of metrics on, on what is happening with your account. And then the other thing you want from a robot is you want some consistency. You don't want massive drawdowns and then massive wins. You just want it to sit and, and chug away. So that is an FX robot that we do put some of our clients into who trade FX. So... Those are a couple of where our head is at in terms of social trading. So we are doing individual stocks. We're doing indices. Oh, uh, sorry, there's a couple more that we're working on at the moment that uh, Stephen will kill me if I don't mention. So we are doing uh, an offshore uh, a sort of global profit hunter type strategy where we're going to go and pick stocks and indices offshore. And that's going to be run by Gary Boyson, um, who's on our trading desk. Now, if you ever watch CNBC, you'll see Gary because he loves TV. He's on uh, share shootout all the time. In fact, he's winning share shootout, I think, at the moment still. So, you know, he's a hog for TV. But you know what? He's a very good analyst. And he's going to run, you know, there's a couple of offshore trades that he's picked that are very nice. Um, so, that, you know, and they're interesting things. It's like trading in Starbucks. And, you know, they, uh, you know we've got, um, what's the social networking thing that's launching tomorrow? Alibaba, you know. You know, whether you want to go and jump into that, I don't know. But the the exchange traded fund that has Alibaba and Facebook and all of these sort of things in it, maybe that's worth having a look at a punt on on the on the social network ETN. You know, I did mention it previously, and I and I think it's moved up quite quite nicely since then. So, as an incentive to try get you guys to all do social trading, what we've decided with the Global Profit Hunter or the Global Trading product is that anybody who opens up an account with us and funds it and follows one of our guys in the next three months, we will take one person to New York and we will go onto the floor because I've never been onto the floor at New York in New York. So we would like to take someone to the New York Stock Exchange and go on the floor and you know that's we're going to give away that prize towards the end of the year. And anybody who enter, opens an account with us and funds it and starts following one of our guys, you're in you're in the running. If you don't, well you're not coming with us. So I'm going anyway, so whether you're there or not. So a couple of things to watch out for in terms of social trading. And these are really things. Hi, good evening. Uh, these are things that we think you should look at. The problem we have with social trading, as they have it on Zulu Trade, eToro, and these sort of guys offshore, on Zulu Trade there are 20,000 trade leaders, or EAs as they call them, expert advisors. The problem with 20,000, that's a lot of guys I've got to go through and figure out who I want to follow and who I don't want to follow. You want to kind of have a smaller universe of guys to follow. You want to kind of know them. You want to read their blogs. You want to read their research. You want to get their trading ideas. You kind of want to almost build up a, rela a relationship. Otherwise, you're just giving this money to this, this person you've never seen effectively. You're following his trades. You know nothing about him. So do a little bit of research. Don't just pick the trade leader who's top of the pile because he might have a completely different trading philosophy and risk profile to you. Manage the risk profile. I don't actually like social trading uh, trade leaders who have a massive high return and a high risk. So go and have a look at what sort of risk they're taking on. 
you know, what are their sort of drawdowns? If they're going to lose half their account on one trade, avoid them. You want a guy who's going to have a sort of 2% or a 5% sort of money management type rule, especially in FX. I mean, FX, you can be 500 times geared on FX. You know, the, the, the game is over very quickly when you're 500 times geared. So you don't want uh, uh, big drawdowns. And you don't want guys who set deep stop losses because that will destroy your account because, you know, you want tight stops. You want quite tight prof take profits as well. You don't. You also want good money management. You don't want him just doing one trade and putting all his money into one trade. You want to have diversification across several trades at a, at a time. So money management is important. So this is the sort of risk metrics you need to look at and understand when you look at these traders. The good thing about coattail investing or copy trade uh, investing is you will learn. If you pick the right guy to follow and you follow his trades and you see how he thinks and how he does his technicals, you will learn. You'll understand trade setups and why he's getting in and two to one stop, you know, win to loss ratios and these sort of things. You will start picking up those things even though you're not doing the trade. Well, you are doing the trade. Effectively, at the end of the day, it's trading in your account and it's your trades. But you need to kind of upskill yourself at the same time. Otherwise, it's just like giving your money to a unit trust manager. You might as well learn something along the way. So it's not a bad approach, especially if you're getting a lot of collateral from that trade leader. And time to market. Don't get involved in a system that has delays and latencies, etc. Because especially in the FX world, if he gets involved in a trade and it takes your system five or ten minutes to copy that trade, too late. Because news kind of non-farm payrolls can come out in between and he makes the profit and he already banks it and you're not even in the trade and then you get in the trade later and he's getting out. You know, you cannot, you need fast systems for this. You, you don't need fast systems. Your provider needs fast systems. Okay, you just need an internet connection. You just need to say follow. But he must have decent systems, no latency on following those trades. If you're only doing one trade a year, then you don't really care about latency. But if you're doing 10 trades a day, then you care that, that your trade must go in simultaneously with his. And remember, in terms of how these systems work, unfortunately, and, and this is where we will run into some snags doing this in South Africa, is that all these trades go in simultaneously and they all go in as individual trades and they all have their own time price priority. So if there's only 100 shares on the offer and there's 100 of you and you all bid for 100, well, guess what? One of you is going to get that and the rest of you are all going to stay bid in the market. And that's where we're going to have to think through any liquidity problems in our own market. So if you're following someone and he only trades small cap liquid stocks, the likelihood of you getting traded is very low. You're going to be sitting bed in the market a lot. So think about that. Think about liquidity, about what, uh, what stocks you're trading through your, through your social trading. And as I said earlier, diversify across asset classes and trade leaders. Don't just back one guy with one strategy or one girl with one strategy. And then look below, beyond the top traders because those guys are being followed by a lot of people and they might be taking on massive risk. You know, drill in a little bit. And also, you know, speak to us. If you find a trade, uh, a, a, a trade leader you want to follow, we'll happily do due diligence on that person because we might want to follow them because we do put our own money into these trades as well. So that's about it for copy trading or social trading or coattail trading, whatever you want to call it. So hopefully that gave you a very, very high-level overview of social trading. It hasn't been around very long, as I say, about three, four years. But you can see it's been immensely popular. If eToro has done 100 million trades already through their social trading, you, you kind of know there's been a huge uptake. There's been almost no uptake in Africa. There's about 4% of eToro users come from Africa, you know, whereas about 40 50% come from Europe. So Africa, in terms of social trading, has been a very, very slow adopter of this. And maybe it's just because we just don't look outside of, of what's going on outside our borders. We just look at what's happening on our own exchange. Anyway, I'm open for questions now. We have a mic that we can pass around. And for the guys on the webinar, if you want to type in your questions, if you haven't already, uh, we'll read them out so we can answer them.